Uh, so second round, uh, he got in real deep on a shot. I went for a guillotine and he picked me up pretty good, put me back down, felt my shoulder pop out. Uh, probably about, I don't know, I, I was trying to, tried to hit a couple things and my shoulder just kind of felt empty. And, uh, you know, I got back to the corner and I was like, dude, my shoulder's out, my shoulder's out. And they were kind of like, don't think about it, just go. Um, so my shoulder popped out somewhere in the second round when he picked me up and put me down. But it's my mistake. I hung on to a guillotine for too long and paid the price. So what do you think it is, dislocated? Uh, I think it either popped out and popped back in or maybe a labrum tear or something. Okay. I've had uh, some small shoulder injuries before, but this one's kind of feeling a little bit a little bit funky right now. Was it messing with you? Definitely. Uh, you know, the whole the whole rest of the second round, I was trying to bump on bottom, and then, you know, I ended up kind of powering up everything with my right side, and when we stood back on the feet, you know, I was thinking hard right hands and trying to, you know, switch stances and trying to get creative and uh, let the legs go a little bit more because my jab hand was kind of not feeling like it was even, I felt like my arm was just completely missing. Right. So I almost felt like I was fighting with a one arm. Did you feel like you were at your best? Obviously, you took the fight on very short notice. Did that affect you at all in this? Uh, you know, totally. My cardio wasn't, it wasn't anywhere near as it's ever been. This is the worst cardio I've ever had for a fight. But, um, you know, I got to say, this is the best mentally prepared that I've ever been for a fight. Um, I started training with some new guys and, uh, you know, we started going over some, some more higher level um, ways of, of pursuing a fight. And it's kind of put my mind in a zone that it's never been in. And despite having no cardio, Having that mindset, um, you know, thinking about these things mentally and, 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 you know, keeping going and reminding myself throughout the fight, it made a tremendous difference on, on the fight. Even though I looked pretty tired coming, you know, throughout the fight, my mind was really telling me something different than my body was telling me for sure. So you took it on like 10 days notice. Were you working on that mental stuff before you even got this fight? Definitely. Right. It's something that I've been working on for a while. Um, you know, I started training with Ricky Lundell and he's really turned my mind into something that it was before, you know. Um, we've gone over a lot of philosophy of fighting, and, and, and you know, we've got a lot of tools in, you know, in my bag, and it was just a matter of, of a way to use those tools smart, um, rather than just, you know, going into a fight for a fight. It was more of going into a fight tactically, mm -hmm. and and um, you know, when you when you finally step up to that higher level of training. You know, it opens a whole new door and a whole new window of, of a way to, to fight, and uh, you know, something incredible. I've never, I've never thought about this my entire fight life, my entire life. I've never pursued a fight in such a tactical, mental way. You know, I, it, I just fought an Olympian, and you know, he's a, he's a tough, strong wrestler. Um, you know, I'm very proud of myself. We, we took on an Olympian, and we did great with it. We, we tactically beat him. At the end of the first round, there was a little bit of a, I don't know if you want to call it an incident, but it seemed like you threw a punch after the horn sounded. Yeah, uh, you know, I have trouble hearing out of my right yeah. ear. I got to say that. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I'm like half deaf in my right ear. Wow. So uh, it was How something come? that happened when I was a, I was a baby. What happened? Uh, I put a, a Q-tip through my ear. When, wow. I, when I was about six months old. Oh, no. And so I ended up losing a little bit of hearing in my right ear. Um, you know, plus my coaches are kind of like, we were, we were trying to be offensive the whole time. Um, you know, I know the time was starting to run short, and I saw that he was starting to get gas, and he was hurt towards the end of the round, and so I was thinking, go, 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 go. You know, the referee stopped me immediately, but, um, you know, I thought I saw him running, so I went for another punch, and, you know, my mistake, you know, it wasn't something I was planning on doing. It was not, a, I wasn't intentionally throwing a cheap okay. shot whatsoever. Um, you know, it was just something that kind of slipped. Um, you know, it wasn't, I slipped on a banana peel, but, you know, thank, thank God nothing drastic happened. It wasn't, it wasn't like I landed a, a hard blow, you know. I think he came back and he, he, he hit me back or something, because I turned around and I thought, I, felt, I couldn't tell if it was a referee or if it was a fighter, but, you know, um, yeah. either way. Because Joe Rogan brought up the Pettis thing. Right, right. So kind of saying this is a, a running theme for you. Do you want to clear up, you know, now people are... Yeah, you know, I'm starting to get the idea that maybe you're trying to hit guys after. Yeah, the yeah, war. yeah. No, no, no. Uh, you know, the Pettis, you don't seem like a dirty fighter. No, no, so. I'm not whatsoever. You know, yeah. I, I definitely don't condone anything like that. Um, you know, the Pettis fight was a very emotional fight for me. Um, you know, that was another one I slipped on a big, big banana peel. But um, you know, if you've ever been in a fight and you've ever uh, you've ever been on the losing end of a fight and you know all the odds are against you and then you end up knocking out somebody drastically, yeah, yeah. the emotions obviously run very, very high. And uh, you know that was that was one that you know I had to really step back and, and discipline myself a little bit more. And uh, you know I paid the price for it. You know, it, was, it was a big mistake. I got blown up. I received a lot of hate for it. So it's something I definitely needed to to uh, needed to clean up from from that point on. 
Um, you know, it probably looked really bad that I did this. You know, it kind of looked like I was going for it again, but it was completely unintentional. Uh, last thing for me, did you take uh, the, up the WME offer to go to the E League? event last night that you uh -huh. tweeted about? No, I didn't, man. Right. I didn't. I ended up, my, my, my mom drove in 13 hours from Dallas and oh, she got wow. in last night, so I had to take her out to dinner. It was my intention to go, but yeah. I didn't make it out there, unfortunately. Yeah. Congrats. When you said there was a short short notice, you know, was there even any chance to really game plan, or was it just more like what you mentioned before, working on the mental aspect, or was there a game plan? You know, you? when it's short notice like that, you only work on game plan. You know, that's the only thing we focused on. There was no, it, I wasn't going to learn anything new. There was nothing new to learn in eight days or ten days, whatever it was. Um, there was no cardio that was going to magically pop up out of nowhere. It was purely tactical. We only had to work on game plan, game plan, tactics, tactics. We knew that he was going to shoot. We knew the cardio wasn't going to be there, so it was tactics. That's the only thing that we could really rely on for this fight was smart tactics. And when it got time for the decision, were you pretty confident that it was going to go your way? You know, it was hard to tell because the second round was kind of rough. Um, but, you know, towards the end of the third round, I felt pretty good that he was running and I was having him, you know, I, I, I kind of was starting to tunnel vision in on it and box him a little bit more. Um, so I felt pretty good, but I was still, you never know with the judges um, how it's going to turn out, especially in MMA because he got a lot of takedowns on me. But at the same time, I kind of gave him a couple of those. So it wasn't like necessarily clean takedowns. It was my mistake going for a submission I shouldn't have been going for. And uh, so, you know, kind of catch me a little bit. I don't know, but I felt like I landed some cleaner shots on him. I felt like I landed the harder shots on him. So, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of a coin flip, but I felt like it was more on my side than it was on his.